Yeah, this is a uh, joint work uh, uh, between uh, CWI and, and Google, uh, uh, myself, Eli Burstein, uh, Pierre Karpman, Ange Albertini, and Jörg Merkov. And this represents uh, a work, uh, well, building upon uh, already research going back uh, two decades, but this particular piece of work uh, lasted uh, two years. Uh, we worked for two years on, on this. And uh, oh. so SHA-1 is a cryptographic hash function, so it's going to take an arbitrary length input and it's going to compute a SHA-1 hash, uh, a bit string of 160 bits. And SHA-1 was designed to be collision resistant, although even we don't have a formal uh, 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 definition of collision resistant, there is an informal definition that it should be infeasible to find different X and Y that map to the same output. And of course you have the, the, the birthday search, so you, there's a generic attack cost of, uh, with complexity of about two to the power 80. And now the two most widely deployed cryptographic hash functions uh, were MD5 and SHA-1 the past two decades, and both have been uh, broken, uh, initially uh, by a, a team led by uh, Professor Xiong Wang uh, et al. And um, MD5 has been broken practically, there was immediately there were, were collisions, and SHA-1 was broken theoretically and it really took 12 years to finally find uh, the first collision. Luckily, we still have two, uh, at least uh, two uh, secure cryptographic hash function standards, SHA-2 and SHA-3, that we can now all uh, migrate to. So that collisions uh, are a problem in, in real world has been already shown quite, uh, quite strongly in, 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 in two instances. Namely, in 2009, when we created the Rogue Certification Authority uh, using an MD5 uh, so-called chosen prefix collision attack where you created a collision between a website certificate, a very just normal one, uh, and a rogue CA certificate. And we basically got uh, a, a, an actual CA signature on our website certificate just uh, by, by requesting a normal process, an automatic process, and we got our signature. And because of the collision property, this signature was now also valid for our rogue CA certificate, thereby in a, uh, suddenly making this a, a valid CA certificate. And then, you, of course, you can generate on the fly uh, certificates for any secure website, and you can do a live, uh, virtually uh, undetectable man-in-the-middle attack. The other instance is in 2012, when there was the, the super malware of Flame uh, targeting uh, in the Middle East, and it actually turned out that it used uh, a fake signature for Windows updates. And again, uh, this was using an MD5 chosen prefix collation attack. And actually, instead of, of targeting the PKI, PKI branch of Microsoft that actually signs Windows updates, it actually attacked uh, sort of an almost unknown uh, branch that just uh, automatically uh, handed out uh, certificates uh, on the internet if you knew how to ask, and there they created a collision between two certificates where this was actually uh, a, a code signing certificate, and any uh, Windows update signed by that would be uh, accepted by any version of Windows at that time. This, of course, been fixed now. And of course, once you've created these fake updates, they actually spread them basically on a local network using a special Windows protocol that, that you can push updates. Uh, and then it's, you basically have an infection uh, where you basically can do nothing against. So this is, uh, represents uh, uh, the state of the art on MD5 and SHA-1 cryptanalysis. So we have uh, the identical prefix column and the chosen prefix, which is a, a more stronger type of attack. And the current state of attack is that we're basically for MD5, we can very quickly generate collisions in a fraction of a second. Chosen prefix collisions are a bit harder, uh, takes about a day. Uh, we finally managed to get a SHA-1 collision that's uh, uh, to the power of 63 on, on GPU which is actually, relatively speaking, more costly than on, on CPUs, so it's slightly higher. And, well, uh, uh, chosen prefix collisions uh, are about 2 to the power of 77. Well, to also view this uh, sort of in a light from what's, what's uh, 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 practical, you should also think about the, the Bitcoin network that does uh, SHA-2 operations, and on a yearly basis, uh, the Bitcoin network does 2 to the power 86 uh, SHA-2 uh, operations. So that already says that basically, well, 80-bit security is, is uh, not enough. So all these attacks uh, on, on SHA-1, uh, uh, they, they really attack the SHA-1 compression function. The, the, the underlying function that just processes a 512-bit message block and updates the internal 160-bit chaining value. Well, it will uh, iteratively do this until the entire message plus some padding is processed, and then the final chaining value will, of course, be uh, the hash. 
And this pretty much operates like a block cipher. Uh, it will uh, linearly expand uh, the input message block, so 512 bits partitioned as 16 words of 32 bits, and it will expand them to 80 words of uh, 32 bits. And then uh, there will be uh, a nonlinear mixing uh, of the, the, the five word states, uh, basically in 80 uh, rounds, where in every round there's one piece of message uh, used. And then finally, there's a Davis Meyer feed forward uh, to really prevent that the function is uh, efficiently invertible. Now, for collision attacks, we're basically uh, applying differential crop analysis, so we're going to consider two different instances of the compression function side by side, one for each of the messages. Um, and we're going to analyze the differences. So in particular, we're going to use a differential path, which is a precise description of all the differences, how they propagate through the compression function. And the most important part of the differential paths is basically last 60 steps, because they really determine most of the attack's complexity. We want them, uh, that part, to have the highest uh, success probability possible, uh, and basically as far as, as, as possible. And then once we have this differential path, what we can do, we can just translate it into a system of equations, and then we can try to solve this to find the actual uh, M and M prime that will uh, uh, well, be part of our collision. Now, how to design these determinants, uh, this, this differential paths? Well, Chabot and Zhu already showed in 98 that uh, basically uh, the way to go for, for SHA-0 and SHA-1 is a disturbance vector, right? And disturbance vector uh, basically is, is a, a vector where every one bit uh, marks the start of a local collision. And a local collision, well, at that step, at that bit position, uh, a single bit difference will be introduced and it will uh, get directly be canceled in the next five steps. And basically, because it has many one bits, it basically shows which uh, combination of local collisions you have to use. And the disturbance vector is an expanded message itself. So it conforms to the linear message expansion of, of uh, SHA-1. And uh, that's why it's actually the own known feasible way that's actually compatible uh, with the message expansion. So uh, a lot of people have, have looked at it, analyzed it, which disturbance vectors uh, are actually uh, the best ones uh, for, for attacks. Um, and uh, Stephen Manuel actually showed that basically all these disturbance vectors that people have looked at fall in, in two classes that are just shifts and rotates of each other. So we can now easily focus on analyzing these two uh, classes. And each disturbance vector basically determines the XOR difference in a message and also, uh, like I said, this, this single base state bit difference uh, determines these positions, and, but there's still uh, a variant in, in, in design and carry. So the disturbance vector pretty much already lays the groundwork for the differential path, right? It already dictates many of the differences. You still can just pick sign and, and how many carries uh, you want. So we're going to use the same as approach as, as introduced by, uh, by, uh, by Wang. We're going to use two near collision attacks, right? Uh, where the first near collision attack is going to introduce uh, a difference into the chaining value, uh, and that will then be present at the start of the second block. And then for the main part, we'll actually use the opposing differences. So we'll end up with a negative difference here, and then the Davies Meyer forward uh, will cancel them both, and we have a collision. Well, the benefit of this approach is that we don't have any additional requirement on the disturbance vector that there should be zero differences here. And then we basically have, uh, we can get better differential paths with higher success probability. But that does mean that here in this part, uh, that doesn't really follow the disturbance vector, we have to manually connect them. Well, Wang et al. did this completely by hand, but now of course we have actual algorithms uh, that can, can compute these, these uh, uh, so-called nonlinear differential paths to connect the chaining value input to the main differential path. So, okay, yeah, we have our uh, differential paths. We can translate it to a system of equations. And actually, this is a system of equations that's only on one compression function, which makes it very convenient. We don't have to compute things on two compression functions at the same time. And this system of equations, when it's fulfilled, basically guarantees that when we apply the input differences, that the differential path will be exactly uh, followed. And these, these system of equations actually just consists of very simple equations on message bits, involving at most two uh, message bits, and very simple uh, equations on state bits, again, involving at most uh, two bits. And then, of course, we're going to need to solve them. Well, actually, the first 60 steps are very easily solved. 
right? So in the first 60 steps, we have the entire message block uh, still has freedom, and we can just uh, actually choose the value of the message block that it immediately satisfy all state equations. And actually, we can also fulfill all uh, message bit equations because these are linear message bit equations over bits that are linearly derived from the input message block. So we can just map all these equations to just the first 60 steps. And these are just, uh, uh, can also be easily solved. But yeah, after the first 60 steps, we don't have any degrees of freedom anymore. So now actually the remaining 64 steps are completely determined. But of course, we can still do smart changes uh, that don't break any of the equations uh, up to some point, and thereby we can cheaply generate uh, partial solutions up to some point, and, and basically amortizing the cost of earlier steps. And it still offers quite significant control over about 30% of the steps of Shawa. And then, of course, for the remaining part, we just have to generate many, many, many solutions. So in this case, up to step 24, uh, to just probabilistically fulfill the remaining steps. And that's why you see uh, the success probability of this part is uh, 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 crucial to the uh, complexity. So this is the overview of, of the whole procedure in, in creating uh, such a near collision attack. But of course, we're first going to have to build the system of equations. Uh, we're going to analyze the disturbance vector, look at uh, optimal differential path for the main part, uh, we have to uh, construct the connecting parts between the, the chaining value and the main differential path. Then we're going to translate it all into attack conditions. And actually to speed up the attack, we want to find additional conditions because we allow uh, uh, actually multiple uh, differential paths. And uh, so we can actually find additional conditions that use both message and state bits. Uh, and this will give us a, a slight speed up using uh, the early abort strategy. Uh, this is an additional step that we needed for the uh, second near collision attack because it was the, the, the first steps of the differential path was so heavily overdefined. Uh, just by trying different variants nonlinear path, we couldn't get around the solvability problem. And we, uh, in the end, uh, resulted to, to set to just find a drop in replacement of uh, the first few steps of the differential path. And of course, the next step is, well, we have the system of equations that appears is now uh, solvable, and now we actually have to find a, a solution as fast as possible. So, uh, of course, we have to analyze these smart changes that we can do. They are called uh, boomerangs and neutral bits. And now we're going to, of course, have to write the attack algorithm. And in this case, the attack algorithm for the first 60 steps, and uh, like all the tables, all the constants, they're just completely automatically generated. Uh, that's very convenient, but then the part where most of the attack uh, complexity is has to be hand-optimized uh, uh, and also hand-implemented. And especially for the GPU, that has to be done completely by hand. And then, of course, just running the attack, uh, since it's such a large-scale operation, is also not, uh, uh, not trivial. Well, in the, uh, hereafter, I just want to highlight the, the three techniques, uh, main techniques that we used, uh, namely joint local collision analysis. Uh, that basically, uh, these are the techniques that allowed us to find this collision. And GLCA basically really maximized the success probability we have for the main uh, differential path, so really minimizing the complexity. Uh, I want to talk about the GPU search because instead of a very expensive search on CPU, it was now uh, much more uh, cost efficient with a very significant gap. And of course, I'll also talk briefly about this, this new part, this uh, set. So GLCA, uh, uh, I, uh, we introduced that in, in 2013 at, at Eurocrypt. And instead of just analyzing one differential path, or actually looking, looking at the one optimal differential path, we're going to compute optimal differentials over the last 60 steps, right? And the differential is actually uh, an input-output uh, tuple uh, uh, where the probability of that tuple is just computed as a sum over all possible differential paths that have this input and output difference. So uh, we're really using the benefit of all possible variations instead of just one single uh, differential path. And this, this technique can efficiently compute this for, for SHA-1. And it does so iteratively, right? So it uh, uh, computes uh, a set of different, all possible differential paths over just zero steps, then use that to uh, compute that over uh, one step, then over two steps, and so on, until we've uh, uh, found the set that we want, and we can just do immediately uh, uh, determine 
uh, these differentials. And to do so, it wants to start at a trivial set uh, of zero difference, so that's why we split the analysis in independent step intervals. Um, so there's this step interval 33 up to 53 and 53 up to 61, where there's completely a zero difference in the state. Uh, so we start with a zero difference in state and we end with a zero difference in the state. And then it's actually very convenient. We can look at these, these uh, tuples of input and output difference. Well, they have to have this zero difference, so the only uh, uh, thing are these, the, 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 the message difference uh, used to get there. And of course, we're just going to select all these message difference uh, that have the maximum probability. Um, so this uh, immediately guarantees we have the highest success probability. And then the next step is, well, well then we can also just derive the minimum amount of equations that we need uh, to ensure that we get this highest probability. For the last few steps, uh, we know that the, uh, the starting difference is uh, zero, but at the end, we do have a non-zero difference, uh, of course. Uh, that's what we uh, relaxed with a two-block approach. So now we're going to actually look at all highest probability output difference and message difference. And then we're actually going to select all message differences that have the largest number of uh, uh, output difference. This basically allows us uh, a factor six speed up for the first new collision block, because there we don't care uh, about which output difference we get initially. And, but for the second block, we're just, of course, uh, forced to use the negative uh, difference, uh, the negated difference of the first block. And again, we can translate this to a minimum linear amount of linear equations. Uh, so we get, again, both the highest success probability and uh, the fewest uh, conditions that uh, allow this. Although the first few steps are, are slightly different uh, because that's where uh, the, uh, the speed ups uh, happen. And actually there we want a fixed differential path up to step 23. Um, uh, so that we actually get fixed state conditions that we can use for, for earlier board strategy and also to, to check uh, uh, the boomerangs. So we're going to slightly tweak this, this statement. So instead of just taking the, the, the probability of all possible uh, 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 differential paths, we're actually going to set a, a fixed part and we're going to take the maximum over these, these fixed differential paths uh, over the, the uh, differential. And this really allows us to, even with a fixed differential path, to maximize the success probability and again get all these conditions that we want. <coughs> so the next part, so uh, after we found this, this uh, system of equations, well, at least for the second near collision attack, uh, we ran into this problem uh, where the differential path is just uh, enormously uh, overdefined. Well, of course, the first five words are just directly determined by the chaining value, but then in the words output it in the next five steps, well, we only have uh, 15 free state bits, so 15 degrees of freedom, but besides these, these state equations, we still also have uh, message equations that aren't listed here, and we have 23 of them. So it's just, uh, directly over the point, and we don't really expect there's any solution at all. And we tried various techniques to just uh, try many variant differential paths, uh, basically with different signing, uh, different conditions, to try to find something that, that's uh, solvable and that, that really took too long and, and we didn't uh, manage to get around this. So finally, we decided to tr just try to encode it as a SAT problem, right? So we uh, uh, created in, in SATs uh, equations over two compression functions. We forced the input chaining values we forced the conditions of the differential path around step eight, and we forced uh, the linear message equations over those first eight steps, and we just asked Seth, well, just give me uh, a variant differential path that just fits this place that I can just uh, put in directly in as a uh, drop-in replacement path. And this just solved the problem in one hour. So this also shows that uh, we don't, uh, this can now be efficiently solved. So we don't need any degrees of freedom from the first near collision block. We don't need any conditions, uh, however complicated, on the output chaining values of the first near collision block. So uh, that's, that's very uh, convenient. So the, 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 uh, the reason why it's we finally may really managed to work is, of course, we ran it on GPUs, which are much more cost efficient, right? So a GPU that, that we, for instance, that we looked at, uh, GTX 970, uh, has 1,600 cores uh, versus now regular CPUs. Well, uh, I think there are now uh, coming uh, CPUs with uh, 20 cores. Um, but still, this is, uh, is many more. Um, 
But there is, of course, one trick. Uh, you have to avoid branching to make efficient use of them because 32 cores in the GPU are linked together. If they want to execute the same instruction, they're going to do it at the same time. If they want to execute different instructions, then these are going to be serialized. So if, they all, if there are 32 different instructions, then it's going to take 32 cycles to execute them. So you really have to avoid branching to make efficient use of them. Well, the problem is our collision search isn't just a raw shell one computation, it's a depth first tree search, right? So at a certain step, we're going to explore all degrees of freedom. We're going to check if the conditions are met. And if so, we're going to go forward. If we exhausted our freedoms, we have to backtrack. So, uh, this doesn't seem to me naturally compatible with uh, GPU, but still we uh, have a very efficient uh, framework for GPU that did allow uh, efficient computation. We just changed the model of how we uh, worked the problem. So actually what we're going to do is we're going to store partial solutions up to some step in shared buffers. So, right, so this stores all partial solutions up to step 26. And then uh, we can just have uh, uh, every thread of a warp, so, so 32 threads would just take, each would take a solution from here, they would execute the same code to extend this uh, uh, to solutions of 26. So every uh, core would try all degree of freedom and then store the partial solution. And now actually the only branching that's happening is whether or not to store an extended solution into the buffer uh, instead of just uh, skipping to entire different parts of the program. And of course, to really enforce step first research, we have to enforce that they always first try to look at uh, the last buffer uh, that has uh, enough work. So if we're going to compare the, this, this GPU with CPU, well, uh, the original work where this is, uh, our attack is based on, the, from Eurocrypt 2013, has a theoretical uh, estimate of two to the power of 61. And if you consider that one CPU core does about two to the power of 34 SHA-1 operations per hour, uh, then well, you end up with an estimate of 15,000 core years. Whereas if you look at, at uh, the GGX card, if you look at raw SHA-1 uh, operations, it's actually two to the power of 42.3. That means it would only take 50 uh, GPU years, significantly less. Uh, at about the same cost, right? So one CPU core and one GPU, they're roughly of, of about the same uh, cost. But unfortunately, of course, our collision attack, as already showed, is uh, more complex than just raw shell one. So how big a factor are we going to lose relatively to the, to the CPU? Well, this was already analyzed in, in previous work, uh, implementing uh, the, the, the free start collision attacks for shell one. And there they showed, well, in the collision search, we basically get comparable performance of to the power 41.1 instead of this factor. And taking this uh, with this figure, it basically takes uh, 112 uh, core, uh, GPU years. So if you translate it, then actually this the theoretical estimate on CPU translate to this theoretical estimate on, on, on GPU, right? So we lose a factor of two of efficiency, but to actually gain uh, a practical uh, cost efficiency for the overall uh, attack. So this whole attack was run on, on the Google uh, infrastructure, uh, which is a very large heterogeneous cluster uh, distributed over the world of, of different uh, CPUs and, and GPUs. Um, one of the problems is that it was uh, a completely proprietary, both a compile and job system that I had no knowledge of and could not get knowledge of. Um, so there was basically, we wrote the source code and we handed it uh, to Google and there was this, this blind adaption phase uh, uh, blind for us because did, we didn't know what they were actually uh, using and what their constraints were. Blind from the other direction because, well, we wrote it for ourselves, so there were very few comments and, and uh, documentation of the source code. But we still, uh, with just some, some email uh, contact, we, we really managed uh, to overcome certain problems. Uh, uh, one problem was, for instance, that in CUDA, the, the, the development for GPU development framework that we used, we used uh, uh, managed variables, which really convenient uh, uh, moves variables between CPU memory and GPU memory automatically. Well, apparently in the code, in Google's compile system, this completely works and compiles fine, but if you actually execute it, it doesn't support managed at all, but you don't see any error. Uh, so you just have this feature that seems to work, but that actually uh, doesn't. So trying to figure that out was also uh, uh, time consuming, but. Uh, 
So, of course, our attack consists of uh, two sub-attacks, right? The first near collision attack. Actually, we did this on CPU because we already had the source code uh, lying about, so we didn't uh, wait for the development uh, time to build the GPU uh, attacks. And uh, this was run over, well, 100,000 uh, uh, CPU cores over the course of several weeks. And actually, we executed this twice because at the time we didn't have this uh, set step that would really efficiently solve this, uh, this uh, O-defined problem, and we wanted to have some degree of freedom. And so this is now completely uh, unnecessary uh, anymore. And then the second near collision attack, which theoretically is six times as hard, it's, it's like the bulk of the computation, uh, was run on, uh, uh, well, on various uh, uh, NVIDIA Tesla cards, and this basically uh, translates, well, to this 114K20 core years of, or 71K80 core years, which actually has more uh, GPU cores. And, well, this is uh, quite a big uh, number, but yeah, Google has really a lot of uh, GPUs and running on at least uh, 3,000 GPUs. It actually just, the majority of the computation uh, just ran in eight calendar days, which really shows that, well, it was two years work but most of it was development time, right? The majority of computation was just on eight uh, calendar days, really show how practical uh, SHA-1 collisions uh, are now. Um, so yeah, this is our uh, collision, uh, 128 bytes uh, too, and of course, actually what we want to do is we're not just create a random collision, we wanted to create something meaningful and actually reusable. The SHA-1 collision is very expensive, so we want something that can be reused. So, uh, we have one collision, which is just a prefix of a PDF file, and you can create infinite uh, full PDF files that have distinct embedding PDFs. And the way it works is basically, uh, well, we have this PDF header and JPEG header, we start a JPEG comment, and then here in this, this orange part, we have uh, the SHA-1 collision, and there is a difference here. And so this length of the comment fields is different from this length. And so the JPEG parser will skip over the comments and will start the processing image one in this case, and in this case, it will jump to this first part, and it will be another JPEG comment of a certain length, basically skipping over image one, and this JPEG parser will actually parse image two. And of course, the collision is here, so you can plug in whatever image one and image two you want. And you can actually do this yourself. So this is a link uh, for somebody who created a script for you to just do this for, for any uh, PDF files that you want. <coughs> uh, I mean, we didn't really uh, expect it to break something, but we did break something, namely uh, uh, subversion repositories, because they were using SHA-1 for file deduplication, but they were using MD5 to check if everything was uh, sent correctly, and basically, putting a SHA-1 collision in there just broke the repository because it could never get anything sane out of it anymore uh, that's actually validated with the MD5. So of course we had some more uh, uh, impact. Uh, Git actually started moving away from SHA-1 and, uh, uh, and actually uh, Google Drive and Gmail now actively uh, check for SHA-1 uh, collisions and also Git and GitHub. So I'm at the end of my uh, talk, so uh, briefly want to show SHA-1 collision detection. That's a real-time detection for SHA-1 collisions, just a single message, so you don't need both messages. And this is now actually also, the, uh, this was, is used in, in Git and GitHub by default in Gmail, Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive. So that's very, that's very nice, right? So real-time protection against these SHA-1 collision attacks. So uh, uh, yeah, I basically want to end my, my talk here uh, and uh, are there any questions?